All right, let's skip the do now. Oopsies. All right, let's skip the do now and go right into the lesson. So I told you chapter three is where all the proofs all the things we've been learning in chapter one and chapter two about proofs will come together and sort of make a lot more sense. So now we won't just be bisecting for the sake of bisecting or um, adding or subtracting just for the sake of adding or subtracting. It will all be put towards the one ultimate goal of proving triangles congruent. And that's what chapter three is all about is proving triangles congruent. Uh, so before we can talk about how to prove triangles congruent, we want to talk about congruent figures in general. Um, the word congruent means what? The same, right? So if two segments are congruent, they are the same length. If two angles are congruent, they have the same measure. If two figures are congruent, they are the same. means you can place one figure on top of the other figure and it will match up point for point, segment for segment. They will be like, they will be identical. They will be identical. So in order to be considered congruent figures, you have to have the same shape and size. Same shape and size. So can a triangle ever be congruent to a square? No, because they're not the same shape. Okay. Can a right triangle ever be congruent to an acute triangle? No, because the right triangle has a 90 degree angle where an acute triangle has all acute angles. So they can't be the same. Now, when it comes to stating that two figures are congruent, the order that the letters are written, Chase, focus, the order that the letters are written matter. The order that the letters are written matter. So you're gonna hear a word now that I'm gonna be using all throughout the year, the word corresponding. When I say the angles that correspond to each other, it's the angles that match up. When I say the sides that correspond to each other, it's the sides that match up. So the sides and angles that correspond to each other have to be written in the same order. So if I'm telling you triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FED, do we all see how A is written first? That means angle A is going to correspond to angle F which means angle A is congruent to angle F. All right, and then we have angle B is written. Well, now B is written second. What other letter is written second in the second triangle? E. So what does that mean? Angle B is congruent to angle E. Notice how I'm now changing the marking. Because if I just put the same loop for all of them, it would mean that all of them are congruent. We have to put a different mark. All right, and last but not least, C and D are written last. That means angle C is congruent to angle D. So we had angle A congruent to angle F. We had angle B congruent to angle E, and we had angle C congruent to angle D. All right, now the segments that correspond also based on how it's written. So if we notice, A, B are the first two letters. That means the first two letters of the first triangle will correspond to the first two letters of the second triangle. So A, B will correspond to F, E. So segment AB will be congruent to segment FE. All right, what next? Well, let's look at the second two letters. So then we have BC. Which side will cor BC correspond to? ED. So BC will be congruent to ED. And the very last side will pair the first and last letter. We'll pair the first and last letter. So AC will correspond to FD. So we said AB congruent to FE. We said that 
BC was congruent to ED and AC congruent to FD. All right, would the statement triangle ABC congruent to triangle DEF be correct? So now what you want to do is you want to base this on our markings. So remember, the sides and angles that correspond to each other have to be in the same order. So they wrote A first. That means A corresponds to D. Well, A has just a loop. What does D have? A loop with two slashes. Are they the same? No, so is this written correct? No. All right, you guys answer the second question and then zoom in so I can see your answer and hold it up. So would the statement triangle EDF congruent to triangle BCA be correct? Yes or no? Once you're done, hold it up so I can see. Good. Good, 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 good. Yes, you all win. Yes, it would be correct. If triangles are congruent, all pairs of corresponding parts, sides, and angles that match up are congruent. So now what we're doing, I want you to do this on your own. I told you triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ZXY. It's not how the triangles are drawn. Okay? Just because A is on the top and X is on the top doesn't mean that A and X are congruent or correspond to each other. How do we know which ones correspond to each other? Adam? If they line up. Would they line up with the letters? So just to start, A does not correspond to X. Which angle does A correspond to? Olivia. Z. So A would be congruent to Z. So be very careful here when you're matching up. So go ahead, answer A, answer A and B, and then we'll go over. Let's go through this. So we did together angle A and angle Z are congruent. Can someone tell me which angle is congruent to angle B? Chase? Angle X. And which segment is congruent to angle C? Jocelyn? Angle Y. Angle Y. Perfect. So we had angle A congruent to angle Z, we had angle B congruent to angle X, and we had angle C congruent to angle Y. All right, next one. State and label the pair, oh, the segments. Okay, so now somebody name me, Erin, name me any segment that's congruent. Excellent. A segment AB is congruent to segment ZX. Name me another pair of segments that are congruent. Mariana. Excellent. BC congruent to XY. And the last one, Adam. Uh, 
A C congruent to Z Y. You got it. All right. Next question. Would the statement triangle B C A congruent to triangle Z Y X be correct? Thumbs up for yes. Thumbs down for no. Good. No. Right. Angle B has just a loop with a slash, and angle Z has just a loop. So those do not correspond. That's a good word, correspond. They do not correspond to each other. All right, let's get into proving triangles congruent. As of right now, our initial day, there are going to be three ways to prove triangles congruent. I will, um, there will be more as we progress in chapter three, but as of right now, our starting point is three methods. The first way to prove triangles congruent is side, side, side. What does that mean? That means three sides of one triangle are congruent to the three corresponding sides of a second triangle. So x, y, if I were to tell you x, y is congruent to a, b, and x, z is congruent to a, c, and y, z is congruent to b, c. That's three sides of one triangle congruent to three corresponding sides of another triangle. Now, doesn't that make sense? If I had three pieces of spaghetti, one three or six p, well, three pieces of spaghetti, one three centimeters long, another four centimeters long, and the last five centimeters long. Then I had another group of spaghetti, one three centimeters long, one four centimeters long, one five centimeters long. Wouldn't they make the same exact triangle? Yeah, so if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, they are congruent. So we would say if this was a proof, our conclusion would be triangle, and then we'd name the triangle YXZ. So I said YXZ. Can somebody match that up for me? How would I name the other triangle? Mariana? BAC. Excellent. And our reason for this conclusion would be SSS, side, side, side. All right, the next one is side angle side. The next one is side angle side. So it's going to be two sides in one angle, but not just in any random order. The angle has to be sandwiched in between the two sides, or another way of looking at it is the angle has to be made by the two sides that are congruent. So those two sides that are congruent have to come together to be the vertex of the angle. So what I mean here is if I tell you that YZ is congruent to BC, and I also tell you XZ is congruent to AC, so now the two sides with the markings on it have to come together to form the angle. So what sides do YZ and XZ come together? What angle does it make? Connor. A angle Z. Angle Z. So I would need angle Z congruent to what angle on the other side? Chase. Angle C. Angle C. So it can just be two sides in any angle. The angle needs to be sandwiched between the two sides that have tick marks on it. So now we have side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. And so I would say triangle, our conclusion would be triangle. Now let's say I say X, Z, Y. If I said X, Z, Y, can somebody match that up for me? Soph, can you match it up for me? You got it, A, C, B. And your reason in the proof would be SAS. Now this actually makes perfect sense because I have, if I have two sides and an angle in the middle, right? So the two sides have to be the same length. And now the angle in the minute, middle, doesn't that determine how wide those two sides are gonna open? 
So like if it's a smaller acute angle, it's not going to be open so wide, right? But if it's a larger angle, it's going to be opened wider, which means you'd need a longer segment for the wider angle and a smaller segment for the smaller angle. So this angle that's determining how wide it's opening up is the same. So wouldn't that make sense that these two segments would have to be the same length to close up that angle opening? So then that would bring us back to side, side, side again. And then we would be able to prove the triangles congruent by side, side, side. So last one we're learning today um, is angle, side, angle. So that's going to be two angles and one side. Two angles and one side. The order does matter. The side has to be sandwiched in between the two angles. So if I tell you angle Y is congruent to angle B, and I tell you angle X is congruent to angle A, which, side are, which sides are sandwiched between the angle markings? Logan, which side sandwiched between the angle markings? X, Y, and A, B. You got it. So this is going to be triangle. Now let's see. I'm going to say Z, X, Y. If I say triangle Z, X, Y, Sophia, can you match up the other side for me? C, A, B. You got it. And the reason would be A, S, A. All right, so those are the three, as of this point, ways we can prove triangles congruent. There are ways we cannot prove triangles congruent. The first method that we will not be allowed to prove triangles congruent is angle, angle, angle. Three angles of one triangle congruent to three angles of another triangle. That is not a way to be congruent. It's actually a way to prove them to be similar. It's actually a way to prove them to be similar. Um, let's talk about why. I can have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? That's just talking about the angle measurement. Can I dilate that triangle, like make it bigger? I can double it. If I double the size of that triangle, my angles are still 30, 60, 90, but now my segment lengths are double the size. So that's not a way to prove triangles congruent. AAA is not a way to prove triangles congruent. The next way is angle side side. If it spells something you shouldn't be saying, it's not a way to prove triangles congruent, okay? Angle side side. It is not a way to prove triangles congruent. And guess what? Angle side side is the same as side side angle. Just because you're writing it backwards doesn't make it okay. It still doesn't work, right? ASS and SSA do not work, all right? And then the last one I'm going to say is angle, angle, side, and I'm going to say not yet. By me saying not yet, what does that imply? Yeah, right now we can't use it because we don't have enough knowledge to use it, but we will learn it later. We will be eventually using angle, angle, side. We just cannot use it yet. Okay, so what we're going to do now is based on the markings, based on these tick markings, we're going to say, do the markings prove these triangles congruent? If so, by what method? And then how would we match up the corresponding sides and angles? So the very first one, thumbs up if the triangles are congruent, thumbs down if they are not congruent. Thumbs up or thumbs down, congruent, not congruent. Good, you all win. These are congruent, so we're going to say yes. Nilakshi, by what method? Say one more time. ASA. Okay, do you see any angles congruent in the diagram? No. So our option, SSS, you got it. We only have three sides, so that's SSS. And now I said triangle ABC. Um, Colin, tell me, if I said triangle ABC, how would you name the other triangle? You got it. All 
All right, number two, thumbs up if the triangles are congruent, thumbs down if they are not. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Excellent, thumbs up. These are congruent. Kayla, by what method? Angle, side angle. Um, Bridget, I said triangle H-I-G. What are you going to say? KLJ. KLJ, perfect. All right, number three. Thumbs up if these are congruent, thumbs down if they are not. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Good. These are thumbs down. These are not congruent. What do these tick marks suggest? Angle, 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 right? Three angles. Not a method. So there's no way to prove these triangles congruent. Um, could they be congruent? It could be. If this wasn't always, sometimes, or never, this would be a sometimes, right? They could possibly be congruent. We just don't know. Maybe, maybe not. All right. Number four is a little bit different. Let's talk about number four. So right off the bat, I have segment AD congruent to DC, and then we have the two right angles, which are also congruent. All right, so that's one side and one angle. Do you all see how they share the same side BD? If they share that same side, isn't it the same length in both triangles since they share it? And didn't we learn something that said anything, any segments congruent to itself? What was that? It started with an R. Anything's congruent to, any segment's congruent to itself. Reflexive. Reflexive. The way we mark this is with an X. The way we mark this is with an X. So, will these triangles actually be congruent? Absolutely. By what method? SAS. You got it. SAS. So, we're going to say yes. SAS, and then I said triangle BDA. How are we going to name the other one, Adam? BDC. BDC. All right, try number five on your own. Try number five on your own. All right, thumbs up if you think they are congruent, thumbs down if you think they are not. I'm so proud. Yes, they are congruent. Even though I only have two sides, where did you guys get that last piece? Emily. So close. It is has to do, but it's not reflexive because they're two different angle C's. For an angle to be reflexive, it has to be the same exact angle C. But it does have to do with those two angles, but they're not reflexive. M, you got this. What kinds of angles are angles A, C, B, and D, C, E? I'll call them one and two. What kinds of angles are these? They're vertical. Perfect. Because of the vertical angles. So then these are absolutely congruent. Um, Logan, by what method? SAS, you got it. And then if it's triangle ECD, um, James, tell me, I said triangle ECD. How would you name the other one? Nope. So EC has one slash on it. Which segment has one slash on it? So it's not going to be BCA. It's going to be... ACB, you got it. I will take points off your quiz if you do um, write the, the letters wrong. All right, number six, thumbs up or thumbs down? Are they congruent? Are they not congruent? So I think we're split 50-50. I hear some yes, I see some no. All right, so the people that say yes, what method are you thinking? The people that say yes, Connor. S A S. Now the thing with S A S doesn't the A have to be sandwiched between the two sides? 
So here they have the marking. So here AB has a marking and CB has the marking. Which angle would need to be the one marked for this triangle, for it to be SAS? Angle B. Angle B. So this is not SAS. What is this if we're reading it? Erin? Side, 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 angle, or angle, side, side. Can we use that? No. So this is not a way to prove triangles congruent. So we're going to say no. ASS cannot be done. All right, so now we're going to say what additional information we need to be prove the triangles congruent by um, the specific method. So based on what I already have marked, if I wanted to prove these congruent by side, 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 what else would I need to state? Chase. Um, the a, uh, segment AC and DF are congruent. You got it. Segment AC is congruent to DF. If I wanted to prove these same triangles congruent, but now by side, angle, side, Caleb, what additional information would I need? Excellent. Angle B congruent to angle E. All right. Number eight. Nilakshi, if I wanted to prove these congruent by side, angle, side, what additional information would I need? You got it. Perfect. And Adam, if I wanted to prove these congruent by angle, side, angle, what would I need? You got it, angle C congruent to angle Z. All right, I want you to do number nine on your own. Um, it helps to highlight because there's a lot going on in this diagram. So they want us to prove triangle PTW, the yellow triangle, congruent to uh, SRV, the blue triangle. All right, let's go through this. So if we wanted to prove them congruent by side, angle, side, what would we need? What would we need? Uh, Olivia. You got it. TW congruent to RV. Now, if we need this congruent by angle, side, angle, Chase. So you're right with the angles, but we're not right with how we name them. Why are we not allowed to say angle P and angle S looking at the big diagram? There's more than one angle with the same vertex of P and S, right? Oh. So if I said angle P, am I talking about this angle? Am I talking about this angle? Am I talking about oh. the big angle? So we either have to name it with three letters or what do I like to do? 
So number it. I like to number it. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put a number in here and in here. So we're going to say angle one congruent to angle two. Are we ready for proofs? Ready for this? <laughs> you got this. All right, so I'm not writing out my given in class, but on tests or quizzes, do you write out your given? Yes. There is nothing different. We have become very good at knowing the process for proofs. We go through our given and what do we do with each piece of given information if we can? Aside from marking it, we can make conclusions. We try to make conclusions. It's no different. This is always the process for proofs. Go through your given, see if you can make conclusions. So the first one saying segment AD is congruent to segment CD. Any conclusions we can make there? No. Then it says B is the midpoint of AC. Is it written once or twice that midpoint? Once. So is this multiplication or division? No. Since it is not multiplication or division, do we need to go through the function of a midpoint? Yes. Since it is not multiplication or division, we do need to go through the function of the midpoint. So if B is the midpoint of segment AC, what conclu what sorry, I have the hiccups. What conclusion can we make? Connor you got it. Segment AB is congruent to segment BC. Adam, what's the reason? Uh, point. You got it. All right. So we've gone through our given. We've made conclusions. Now we want to prove, I'll highlight it in, I'll highlight the triangles. We want to prove triangle ABD, this yellow one, congruent to triangle C. CBD, this blue one. And now there's three methods. There's, someone tell me one way to prove triangles congruent. SAS. SAS. Somebody tell me another way to prove triangles congruent. Jocelyn. SSS. SSS. There is one more way to prove triangles congruent. What is that? Erin. ASA. Right off the bat, I know we are not going to use ASA here. Can someone tell me, based on whatever we have marked already, why it's not ASA? Bridget? We don't, we don't have any angles, much less two angles, right? So now it comes down to side, angle, side, or side, side, side. I will tell you, when proving triangles congruent, once you've gone through all your given information and tried to make as many conclusions as you can, if you still don't have enough information, you're going to look for either vertical angles or a reflexive side or angle. What do we have here? What do we have here? Noah? DB is reflexive. We have a shared side. So here we're going to have... DB is congruent to DB reflexive. And now we can say triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. And the reason is side, side, side. Are we ready for another one? Anybody still copying? All right, so this one's more involved, but we got this. So we're gonna go through our given, see if we can make conclusions. Angle three congruent to angle six. Any conclusions we can make there? No. Segment KR is congruent to segment PR. Any conclusions we can make there? No. Then it says angle KRO. Look how I'm marking this, KRO. I'm gonna mark it with different colors. So I'm gonna do a red loop, and then I'm gonna do for angle PRM a blue loop. All 
All right, now let's look at what we want to prove. We want to prove triangle KRM, I'm highlighting that in yellow, it really helps to highlight what we're trying to prove, congruent to triangle PRO, really helps to highlight what we're trying to prove. So even though we had a ton of given information, coming off of the given information, I only have one solid pair of sides congruent, nothing else. How come angle KRO and angle PRM, so the blue loop and the red loop, how come those don't count as an angle in the triangles? What's wrong with them? So the red loop and the blue loop, they don't count as an angle. What's wrong with them? Connor? Uh, because they both overlap in the same space. Yeah, they're two what? What's the word? They're two small or big. They're too big, right? Aren't they coming outside of the two triangles? They're coming outside, but we can make it work. So I want, do you all agree? I need angle KRM, so I'm gonna call this angle one, and angle PRO, which I'm gonna call angle two. Do you all agree if I were to get angle one and angle two congruent, those would count as the triangle, as the angles? All right. So how can I go from the blue loop and the red loop just down to angle one and angle two? Subtraction, Subtraction excellent. But aren't we subtracting away the same angle? I'm gonna call that angle angle seven. So since I'm subtracting away the same angle, what do I have to do first? Noah? Reflexive. So I'm gonna say angle seven is congruent to angle seven reflexive. Then I can go through and say angle one's congruent to angle two, subtraction. So then we got this angle congruent to this angle. We're moving, we're moving in the right direction. We have one angle, we have one side, how come three and six don't count as angles? What's wrong with them? How come three and six don't count as angles? What is wrong with them? Chase? They're outside the triangles. They're outside the triangles. But guess what? Three and six congruent, how is that gonna help me get four and five? How are having three and six congruent gonna help me get four and five congruent? Emily? Because five comp? Comp? Up. Excellent, because four is a supplement to three and five is a supplement to six, right? And didn't we learn a theorem? What was the theorem? Subs of congruent, angles are congruent. Subs of congruent angles are congruent. Good news. We do not have to declare anything we assume anymore. We don't have to write it down. So wouldn't we normally have to identify the straight angles? We don't have to do that anymore because the proofs are going to get longer. We're now taking away the step where we write out what we assume. So now, even though we don't have to declare the straight angles, do we still have to declare the supplementary angles? Yes. So that's our next step. Step number four, angle three is a supplement to angle four. And angle six is a supplement to angle five. A lot of people, I didn't grade your class, but a lot of people in the other classes that I graded for a step declaring supplements wrote subs of congruent angles are congruent. That doesn't make sense here. Subs of congruent angles are congruent. Listen to what you're writing as your reason. Supplements of congruent angles are congruent, which means you would say, be stating that things are congruent. Are we stating that things are congruent? No, we're stating they're supplements. So what would be the reason these are supplements? Chase? Step of sup. Step of sup. You got it. And now that we declared them to be supplements, now we can say angle four is congruent to angle five, and our reason is going to be sups of congruent angles are congruent, which now gives us these two angles congruent. Do we now have enough information to prove the triangles congruent? Yes. Do you now see why for two chapters I was stressing the importance of marking your diagrams correct? 
right? Because it all comes down to this. Unless you're marking your diagrams, you never know if you have enough or not. So triangle KRM congruent to triangle PRO. What method is this? Look at your markings. Olivia? ASA. ASA. Is that a lot? All right, last problem. You all do this on your own. Oh, this double midpoint is not, this double midpoint is not multiplication or division. Go through the function of a midpoint twice. Okay, this is not multiplication or division. Go through the function of the midpoint twice. We'll have somebody come up and do this problem once you're done. Who wants to go up and teach? Chase, you got that? Yeah. You can do it on my, um, the smart board doesn't work. You can do it on my computer with my stylus. Um, you got to teach us. Don't just write it down. I feel like you'd be a great teacher. Let's see if my instincts are right. Absolutely not. All right, so since we have to go through the midpoints twice, uh, all right, let's, let's see that. so first, um, uh, O is the midpoint of segment AY, uh, segment YO is congruent to segment OA. And then since O is the midpoint of ZX, um, segment ZO is congruent to segment OX. And then uh, what would be the reason for that, Adam? Okay. Yeah. That's the midpoint. Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, whoops. You forgot to number this S, by the way. Oh, sorry. Oh, whoops. All right. And then, um, it looks like there are some uh, vertical angles there. Um, so we have, uh, 
angle y o x is congruent to angle a o z because vertical angles are congruent And then now we could say the triangle ZOA is congruent to triangle XOY. And uh, what would be the reason for that? Side angle is high. Yeah. All right. All right, recap. All right, can you hit stop recording? Uh, That's the square button.